when I have a, a client and I'm really vested, if I know that they have a need and I can do something really quick and get it done and we can keep the project moving, I'll be like, I'll just take care of that and yep. we just get it moving. The thing is, oh, is when it's outside of your scope of work, you really should be doing a change order. You really should be charging because that's something extra. It's not part of the original scope of work. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Trip Podcast with XTC. I'm Shalanda. I'm Tristan. And I'm Chris. As an entrepreneur starting or growing your business, you may have a destination, but the journey getting there can be a trip. We want to be your travel companions and inject a dose of XTC as we explore real life conversations about navigating the world of entrepreneurship in the US and the Caribbean. Come take this trip with us. Welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur's Trip with XTC. I am Shawanda. And I'm Tristan. And I'm Chris. And today we are talking about buckling up the entrepreneur and client experience. But before we change gears from park to drive, we got to do our episode, our segment. What you sipping while you tripping? Chris. Let's hit it. What you got in your cup? Longer pause there than I expected, but <laughs> <laughs> well, Shalanda, you uh, uh, pass it off before the little intro there. So I will um, uh, today I'm uh, going with the, the libation of hydration. So I got my uh, big jug of water here, um, a little bit of tea and just staying, uh, staying a little refreshed for this episode here. Not not uh, um, adding in the, uh, you know, the things that make you a little wobbly right yet. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself, Shalanda? Actually, I am also hydrating with a bottle of water. I've had my two cups of very strong caffeinated coffee because yeah. I've been up from early, but I've been inspired by our girl, Amy Santana here in St. Croix, who was doing the government of the VI 30 day hydration challenge. And so I'm trying to keep it going, even though the challenge is over. I'm trying to be mindful of staying hydrated. So are you on that trip too? Oh, of course not. Of course <laughs> not. You know? I see you drinking your water, minding your business, following the little <laughs> Amy, huh? So what it is that I won't be doing today is driving. So I'm buckling up in front of the back seat and I'm gonna have me a little citrus rum. Well, <laughs> I don't know who's driving, it'll be between either one of you two <laughs> since we're hydrating. <laughs> And I'll get dehydrated in the back seat. All right. <laughs> all right. You got that ride ride chair app, Shalanda. I think we gotta order Tristan a ride here. <laughs> There's no Uber down here in the Virgin Islands, so one of us are gonna have to pick him up and cart him around. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> we'll we'll draw straws later. <laughs> <laughs> huh. All right. What is it I want back? I'm gonna end up having to do that because I'm <laughs> <laughs> I guess a technical, yeah, uh, <laughs> geographical. Let's um, go unpack. <laughs> yep. Go going to unpack here. Alrighty, folks. So we are going to shift gears from park to drive, and we're going to unpack this topic about the entrepreneur and the client experience. So we encourage you to buckle up. As entrepreneurs, we often are thinking about how do we get our first client or how do we keep that pipeline of potential clients filled so as one project ends, you're able to onboard another. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is like, how do you select the best client ever, right? How do you onboard them? How do you help to nurture that relationship? And particularly if it's a short-term project, how do you exit gracefully, mm. right? Oh, there we so go. Got to pull out. <laughs> oh, Lord, Tristan. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I just like how you gracefully introduce the pulling out segment, you know, but we won't take that detour now. I'll let you continue. I'll let you continue. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> They're making you turn red. <laughs> season one throwback for all of you trippers just joining us here on season two. <laughs> Listen, Tristan is a Colombian in the group because whenever he says something, there's always a double meaning. <laughs> always, always. That's how we know you're listening. <laughs> oh my god shifting gears back to the entrepreneur and client experience so we could keep this a little pg 13 <laughs> how do you guys select your best client ever what do you what characteristics do you look for unfortunately i'm no good at this um <laughs> it's gonna sound horrible i don't want to be like just take what you get but that was my approach when um when i first started because there was no client base, there was just one way to get jobs on um, trying to stack, um, stack that money, make that paper. Um, so I just literally just took whoever came, and then I learned. I learned mm-hmm. really quickly that the kind of clients that I want are those that don't ask questions like prices. <laughs> um, they might set budgets, but you know, from the time. <laughs> From the time they're like, oh, um, so how much is that going to cost? And how much is this going to cost? And I realize you run into problems really, really quickly. So um, it's okay to have a budget set. However, not to have them nitpick about everything. Um, Outside of that, it's just uh, more about their energy. Um, You want someone that's structured, but not too tightly structured. Not a fanatic. Not someone that wants to micromanage the assignment, mm-hmm. the project um, that you might be working on. So how I go about just picking my clients or sometimes before I accept jobs is usually we meet um, to discuss. Um, I might do a, so what do you call them? I don't want to say like a coffee break and just explore meet to talking. discuss a project. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we just explore a little bit together and feel their vibe. And sometimes you just know from meeting them, that's not where you want to go. So you kind of point them to somebody else. And I'm like, you know, hey, Chris. You know, this might be what does he want to talk to <laughs> about getting that assignment done. <laughs> so any referrals from Tristan, uh, Tristan are just his throwaways. <laughs> Good to know. Well, it could be that or you could look at it from the perspective of not every client is for each entrepreneur. Absolutely. So, for example, I know that the kind of clients that I like to work with are those that can see the value in the services that I'm providing. They know that they have a need. They may not know how to get from point A to point B. So they need a new set of eyes Mm -hmm. to help them make that journey. But they see the value in what I'm bringing and they're not going to nitpick about price, right? And they're going to be responsive because usually projects are time bound. And one of the biggest challenges or things that I put into my contract is a client needs to respond within 24 hours because I'm going to respond within 24 hours and that's needed to keep things moving along. So I tend to to do the exploratory meeting. And then if I do refer to somebody it's maybe because I know that that other entrepreneur has a lot more patience for this type mm. of client, or they like working with those types of clients where that may not be my strong suit. Makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. For, for before that you said that, I, I was going to say similar to you know Tristan, you know, starting out, it was um, I didn't know who my ideal client was yet. Uh, I think it took. Um, it's one of those things where you don't know until you've had that client and then are able mm-hmm. to compare them against um you know other client experiences that you have and you're like mm-hmm. hey you know this one just seems to be um so much less uh um not not less work but less uh resistance less um uh, less struggle just uh, uh to your point Shalanda, you know just the that ability to uh, understand and see the vision um, mm-hmm. understand and see each other as far as, you know, your, the values and roles that, um, a value and, uh, you know, the role and, um, what you're bringing to the table. Um, right. but yeah, it, it's kind of, um, uh, you know, I, I, I guess since I have found some I, I, ideal clients, uh, to your point, you know, it's, uh, ones who don't nitpick about price, but, uh, you know, where I've articulated the value that I'm going to bring and where we're mm-hmm. actually going to go with this. And if it's somebody who just wants, you know, a, uh, a video done or um, something produced, but don't, but, you know, they're very strict about like, Hey, you know, uh, this is a very small budget. We just want to uh, get this done. I don't care how it looks and stuff. And that is not a client for me. I want to have them be happy about the outcome, uh, knowing that we were along, you know, that journey of creating it, um, 
uh, somewhat together, you know, where um, I'm, I'm helping bring their vision to life in a way that uh, they couldn't have imagined it themselves. And so that's where uh, I get excitement from it as well, because then I know that they have, you know, um, some interest and in, in, uh, investment and input into the project where if it's somebody who's like, I just, you know, I just want this done, then, you know, I'm, I, I may, uh, uh, feel in, enticed to, um, you know, put in that uh, amount of work. Well, Hey, if you just want it done, if you don't care about the bells and whistles, then why am I going to spend my time creating something that you won't even care about at the end of the day? So it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that really is kind of tying to both of you that it it took me a while to figure out who uh, my ideal client was but uh these days it is somebody who you know has um just a similar i'm not gonna say similar uh mindset necessarily that i love meeting new people and different uh you know uh, thoughts of mine and, and different trains of thoughts uh different ideas but um i want i want what i do to have some kind of impact and to know it's going to be impactful mm -hmm. for them and used in a way that is um positive even when i used to like make music back in the day i didn't give artists some of my my I beats or my out. songs that i produced because i knew that it was gonna just like you know be um talking about negative stuff or violence and things like that and <laughs> i didn't want my music to be represented in that light so uh that's my little like i guess antidote for that all right yeah, real I quick 2 30 i want to know your your rap name chris like what, what was your, <laughs> your producer name like this is gonna be crazy to start learning things All right. about Chris. So my name is Chris Majoka. Um, I'm not going to tell you where this came from. You can use your own imagination, but my stage <laughs> my stage name was Smoky Jokes. Because <laughs> I brought the fire, and where there was fire, there's smoke, right? <laughs> what? You see what happens when Chris drinks water? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But really quick, guys, just to get back on topic, um, to to expound on what you were saying, I think for me, um, getting a best client ever is really having a clear scope of work with a client and you kind of figure out exactly what's needed. Yep. Um, one of the challenges is when a client says, they, oh, I need you to come in and do this. And then before you know it, the project has scope creep. Or you're going out in directions that were not in the initial contract. And one of the things I realized recently is when I have a, a client and I'm really vested, if I know that they have a need and I can do something really quick and get it done and we can keep the project moving, I'll be like, I'll just take care of that and yep. we just get it moving. The thing is, is when it's outside of your scope of work, you really should be doing a change order. You really should be charging because that's something extra. It's not part of the original scope of work. So that's something, as much as I love the clients that I've been working with, that's something that I have to learn or have learned recently as an entrepreneur is if you want me to do all these X, Y, and Z, and you hired me for A, B, and C, you, you, I need to do a change order to reflect X, Y, and Z. Chris, let me pull my seatbelt real quick. <laughs> so um, Shalana, though, to touch just a little bit as to what you just said, doesn't that mean that you, you've... I feel when I run into that problem, it's with people that I've worked with already. So we've already built that relationship. We've already set who that last project worked out really well. And then now we're not even just vested because we picked these clients. Now mm -hmm. they're, I don't want to say just our clients. They're like family. They're good friends. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Shalanda, how's your daughter doing? Oh, we're going to go play mm -hmm. tennis. We're going to do this. And that's where it becomes really hard, hard to incorporate the change order. And that's our time. I guess no questions. <laughs> Hit the detour. Yeah, let's So that was the perfect lead into the detour. Picking perfect clients. And what happens when we pick perfect clients that are now, I don't want to say family, that now is our friends, um, where we have these different projects that where change orders should be initiated. But we're like, ah, oh, that's Tristan. Um, this one on a two-page report. I got that for you. We'll drop that in. When does your perfect client become? I don't want to say your arch nemesis, really. Like, becomes harder to work with because we keep going above and beyond. How do we keep them? I don't want to say friend zoned. Mm. Well, I think when it starts to impact on your other projects with your other clients. 
is when it that's a real red flag as to you're investing too much in this one client. Because whether we're friends or family or we've worked together for an extended period of time, everybody wants to feel valued. And when mm-hmm. you're being in when you're in a real in a business relationship with folks, you want to also not feel valued, but feel that they respect your time, they respect your expertise, they respect what you bring to the table. And so even though you might do a couple of quick and easy things for them that is not very cost or time prohibitive, whenever those extra bonuses become hindrances to either your own health and well-being because you're spending time doing it versus really recharging your own battery or you're spending time doing it at the expense of other projects that's when you have to kind of pull back and and reset Mm. all right and chris really quickly for you um you're an artist we're artists and you kind of spoke about it and here's what hops into the segment where you spoke about where they want i don't want to say quick and dirty projects Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. how do you I don't want to say back out. How do you kind of ease your way out? Because to me, what I think the client failed to realize at, least at this point in time mm-hmm. is that our friendship still reflects my work. And my work mm-hmm. still goes beyond your project. So for you, um, just using video, oh, let's just do this. Don't worry about the lighting. Don't worry about this. And next, you know, there's shadows all over the videos. There's yep. whatever it is. How do How do we avoid that? <laughs> that is the million dollar question. So, uh, unfortunately I have turned down, um, a number of projects that did go that way, even with people that I'd worked with in the past and just said, Hey, you know, um, I'd love to continue working with you on these types of projects. Like we, like we've already done. Um, but I, uh, you know, for something like this, there are people that are, and, and to this point, I, I had met a, um, a podcast, uh, a guest on, on another podcast recently who, um, did this like to an extreme where even uh, giving somebody a referral uh, she charged for um, mm-hmm. and, and basically saying like, you know, my time is uh, and not in like a egotistical way. It was like, my time mm-hmm. is valuable enough that if you want me to give you like a hundred percent of myself to, in whatever you're asking me to do as a favor um, uh, like let's create a transaction. So that way I feel good about it and you feel good about it. Um, wow. But I have I have not done that. I, I aspire to uh, get that <laughs> level of. Um, but yeah, if if it's somebody I worked with in the past, oftentimes I will um, uh, delegate that project. Or uh, I have done it where I just have um, I really honestly not even added my logo uh, to it. Um, where I've done the quick and dirty thing, where I had the bandwidth to do it, uh, needed the um, you know the money. And, uh, so I did it, but I did not really put my name to, it. and I gave them what they wanted. Um, but just without, you know, my, um, creativity or, or added, uh, benefits, um, included in that. Hmm. Let's take that to the souvenirs. You guys are in deep thought here. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we unpacked a lot and we took a detour and I am going to need your help on these souvenirs because my (laughs) brain was just going like, so one souvenir is really trying to figure out what, who is the best client ever for you and each, for each entrepreneur and each business is different as part of knowing what your strengths and your limitations are. I think I mentioned, you know, I, I like clients that have a very definitive scope of service. Mm-hmm. And for people who want a little bit more ambiguity, they might work better with another entrepreneur. But even recently, yeah. I worked with an entrepreneur that is, is even more structured than I am, if you could even imagine that. And I remember I having a yeah, I remember having a conversation with her, like, girl, you need to like loosen up a little bit, you know. And, she, <laughs> and then we got in a predicament and she was like, This is why. I'm as structured as I am is because I make it very clear up front that if the client doesn't follow through, these are still your obligations to get out of this contract. Mm -hmm. And so I can see the value in having a little bit more structure while I could also see the value in being a little bit more fluid and, you know, throwing in those quick and dirty value added projects 
Um, but for me, just to piggyback on what you were saying before, Chris, where, you know, a client wants something done and you'll do it to satisfy what the client needs, but may not want to put your logo to it because it's not something that you've added your creative juices. So for me, when I work with my clients, if they want to quick and dirty, you can work with somebody else because yep. for the way I see it is whenever my company or my name is attached to a particular project, my brand is attached. So if I do not buy into what it is that they want me to do, then I quickly refer them to somebody else. Cause I'm like, knowing me, I'm going to give you 110%. I just can't. Yep. <laughs> I can't just give you what you want. If I can see opportunities to make it better. So that's right. my limitation, right? Maybe. I would get more clients if I was a little bit looser with that. But any other go that route though. I won't go that route and I won't say that um because you might get more clients, but you're not gonna get the clients that you want. You're gonna get the clients that's gonna give you more headaches, um, cause more confusion within your projects. Um and, so even if, if, I to, add, if I could just add real quick, because to your point, Tristan, one of the things we talked about in season one is entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And so when I think of the kind of clients I work with. I'm working with or working for, I'm looking to see how are they going to positively or negatively impact my lifestyle. I had a client wanting me to show up to their office eight. I said, Oh no, sweetheart, that is not conducive to my remote lifestyle. I want to be able to work from anywhere. So it's really setting those expectations, clear scope of work, what's within the scope of work and what isn't so that you could do those change orders when they keep asking for all this extra stuff that wasn't agreed to in the beginning. But go ahead, Tristan. I, I completely interjected. No, no, it's cool. That's what the teamwork, the collaboration, you know, that's what it's all about. So even mm-hmm. at this point in time, what I did gather from that also is, gosh, brain fart with 30 seconds. I'm going to skip that. So what I want to <laughs> jump ahead to, though, is what Chris was saying with the lady that um, charged for her referrals, what we call that in production is finder's fees. I'm not sure who you bill for it, but we call it finder's fees. So, mm-hmm. oh, and what I was going to tell you, Solano, that ADM um, coming in is not part of our business culture. For those of you that need to know what I mean by business culture, just jump back a couple of episodes and you'll see exactly <laughs> what we're talking about with Kanuma Simmons. <laughs> and Chris, you're going to have to give us... Um, Taking in the view, yes. <laughs> Let's get after it. All right. These scenes are sticky today. They're not going as quick. Um, <laughs> all right. So bringing uh, to the table today, and you've heard this in a million different ways. I'll bring just Confucius's way of, um, of putting it out there. But what you do not wish for yourself do not do to others. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take this a couple different ways. um, But I think the one part that we really didn't talk about here uh, so much is, so we've talked about how we want to work with clients, but what do we actually want to attract clients with? What's our, what's our bait? Um, And, you know, I've, I've heard in, in the video world of, if you want to shoot travel videos, why do you keep promoting your wedding videos? Mm -hmm. So you have to start, uh, when you find your ideal client or ideal type of project where you feel that the ideal clients would, you know, be interested in, in having projects done similar to that, uh, mm-hmm. in my mind, it's, um, and I certainly have to get better at doing this as well, but start promoting the things that I really want to be working on. Um, you know, my pinnacle projects of like, Hey, this is what I'm putting out as my best stuff. And I want to do more things like this and attract kind of the perfect clients based on, the type of projects that I actually want to be doing. And in that sense, that kind of um, uh, takes out some of that issue of like, you know, the, uh, the throwaway projects or doing the, you know, the, the dirty projects that you don't really want to do. Um, And if you are just like, Hey, this is what I do. Uh, And so, you know, I may entertain other things, but basically if you're calling me, you're calling me for this and what I'm putting out as what I represent. Mm -hmm. So that would be my take. I like that. I really like that, Chris. Um, my hardships with that is that sometimes for the projects that we really want to do, we need those funding projects to to carry us through. Um, so in Absolutely. that way, we could then um, put out more of the work that we would like to see. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's again, you pick and choose your your clients, 
But I think we got to pick and choose the clients that bring out the best in us and not those clients that are going to allow us to create shortcuts or, um, here's why I love Shalana with all my heart. If Shalana tells me we're starting at seven 30, I know we're starting at seven 30. Mm -hmm. I've been on a shoot where we were supposed <laughs> to start at like 9 AM and we didn't start until about 7 PM. Um, and, and, and just, just think about the hours in between there. And mm -hmm. that's where it is. We just got to pick, you got to pick the client. Um, we pick up on these little hints and sometimes a lot of the times I feel they're our um, clients we've worked with in the past that we're just really trying to help. We're going above and beyond because maybe we love that last project. So, so in order to take in the view, just make sure sometimes we clean the windows. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nice wrap. Nice wrap. <laughs> Shonda, anything to add real quick or on the taking the no, view? No, I think you guys got it. You guys got it. You covered it for sure. Cool. Well, then let's just bring it to the untimed, uh, informal close here of the episode. Um, and any any last words that you guys want to say? Um, I would say, you know what? Just like when you're entering into a relationship and you have the courting period and the dating period and the engagement period and the marriage and hopefully maybe the divorce Maybe not. Um, <laughs> I think we got to approach our clients the same way. You know, like what I found is I typically do a short term contract, especially if it's a brand new client so that I can feel them out and they can feel me out because we might think we'll work well together. But when we get into the thick of things, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but then if it really works, then I get into a more long term engagement with that client. So that's a quick tip, you know. Um, I agree with Shalanda 100%. Uh, my approach to it is I love the short term. So I only do projects that might be project-based. And even though some of them look like they could spiral into other things, I like to close that gap. So if you said we're going to do a movie, maybe I want to work on one scene of the movie. And then after we did that one scene, you might want to keep me or however it is it goes. But that's just it. I think we just set our boundaries. We look for our caps um and refer people when we're not capable of doing that job sometimes it's not that we don't want it but i love the fact that when we know to ourselves that we hit something that we're not capable of doing and we can refer it to somebody else and not be like oh i'm not doing it so i don't want to say no one else should or no one else i know should you know it's each one to each one we all got to give love mm -hmm. it well, as you uh, can see, Trippers, the client entrepreneur experience is one that you definitely need to buckle up for. We are still figuring it out as we go. Uh, we have our ways that we've learned along the way, you know, as entrepreneurs and different clients that we've worked with, uh, you know, comes through um, the experience that builds the wisdom. But uh, even with that, you get um, sometimes, uh, you know, to your point, Shalanda, you find a client that you think is going to be perfect and then... Uh, you, you sign that contract and next thing you know, you're like, what did I just do? Uh, <laughs> this is not the person I, you know, I started dating now where <laughs> we're buying a house together. This is just, you know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> exactly. that's, that's a different episode. Just <laughs> All right, Trippers, uh, thank you for joining us for uh, this episode um, you know, of, you know, the Buckle Up. Again, the Entrepreneur and Client Experience. Hope you gain some uh, information from here. And we'd love for you to, you know, drop your uh, comments and questions, um, your thoughts on this uh, below. And we will uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Have a good one. Peace. Thank you for taking this trip with us. We hope you had a great time. Join us every Tuesday for another dose of XTC. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and visit us at theentrepreneurstrip.com for more entrepreneurship tips and tricks. See you next time.